effect on putting so much pressure on the legislators in that particular country. The agenda issue is contained and enshrined clearly in the Maputo Protocol under Article 2, under Article 9, which are the issues in contention in this case. Which is the highest court in your land? The Supreme Court. You do not have any other court other than that? Thank you for your question. The Supreme Court is the highest court establishing the constitution of the And therefore you feel that you've existed in local relations in that time? Yes. Proceed. Through Article 9, we have the Maputo Protocol obligating state parties to ensure increased and effective participation of women at all levels of decision making. We believe that when women are represented, we are going to bring about much change to society. We expect nothing but excellence from you, so um, I hope you will agree. The inaugural National Equality Moot Court competition took place on 4th of May 2017 at the Strathmore University. The first objective was basically advocacy. A just society is gauged by the way it treats the marginalized, the vulnerable and the less fortunate as well as the disadvantaged members of the society. To increase knowledge and appreciation of the protocol to the African Charter on the Right of Women in Africa, also known as the Maputo Protocol, to the upcoming lawyers in our law schools. In the African Court on Human and People's Rights, in the matter between the Federation of Women Lawyers of Bannister and the Republic of Bannister. The court is now in session and uh, we're now proceeding to share submissions from both the applicant's team and the respondent's team. To achieve this, we invited all the law schools in the country to undertake preliminary selection in their schools with the aim of introducing as many law students as possible to the Maputo Protocol. When I refer this court to the Maputo Protocol, Article 2 and 9, um, the, the court protocol requires parliament and state bodies to combat all forms of discrimination to ensure they do to move heaven and earth to make sure that they curb discrimination in their states. Firstly, we shall argue that the gender rule is amenable to immediate realization and not progressive realization, as the respondents may argue. Secondly, we shall also uh, submit that failure of the respondent state to take legislative measures to give effect to the gender rule amounts to a contravention of the obligation both under the Maputo Protocol and under the Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women to ensure that women participate in the public life and the public discourse of their country. The participating law schools were University of Nairobi Law School, Moore University Law School, Kenyatta University Law School, JKU Art University Law School, Strathmore University Law School, Kabarak University Law School, Riara University Law School, Catholic University Law School, Kisi University Law School, and Mount Kenya University Law School. The objectives were met as reflected in the passionate argument that were made by students during the moot competition. Yes, we subscribe to the doctrine of democracy, but really, is this democracy? Is democracy and representation of the people being implemented in our country? If it is, why aren't we being appointed in these uh, in, in, in state bodies? Why aren't we being represented in state bodies? Your Excellencies, Article 2 and 9 one of Maputo Protocol and further Article 3 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights obligate state parties to enact to contain in their national constitutions and also legislative measures the, the principle of gender equality. Your Excellencies, uh, we, we wish to draw the court's attention to the various legislations that has been enacted by the state of Balista with regards to implementing this rule, Your Excellencies. In the same month that we have the other legislations, including the budget and other pertinent issues being passed in Parliament, the same same issue, the same same format should be followed in ensuring that women representation is legislated. I would give an example of the neighboring country of Kenya. When an important bill needs to be passed in Parliament, the president himself calls what the Kenyans call a kamukunji of friendly and like-minded parliamentarians and buttresses the point that this Issue. The second objective was to create a dialogue on the way forward in the implementation of two-thirds gender principle in the context of a reluctant parliament that has failed to pass the necessary legislation to give effect to the gender principle. Has parliament done 
done this, uh, it is our submission as the applicants that Parliament has failed to adhere to the Maputo Protocol and the Court uh, in Article 29. This is because Parliament should have at least educated the mass on the importance of equality, on the importance of women representation. In, in the paragraph, um, in paragraph 12, women fail to be represented because of social, economical, and beliefs and attitudes that the African people have, that we African people have about women representation. Parliament should take action to ensure they educate the mass, educate, show the mass the importance of, of representation of women. Excellency, under our merits, we submit that the failure of the government to give effect to the gender rule in terms of legislative uh, measures, and we shall argue this uh, in a twofold manner. Firstly, we shall argue that the gender rule is amenable to immediate realization and not progressive realization, as the respondents may argue. Secondly, we shall also uh, submit that failure of the respondent state to take legislative measures to give effect to the gender rule amounts to a contravention of the obligation, both under the Maputo Protocol and under the Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, to ensure that women participate in the public life and the public discourse of their country. On the third and the fourth issue, the third issue being whether Parliament has failed in enacting legislation for the implementation of the two thirds gender rule in elective positions, and the fourth issue being whether the executive has failed in ensuring implementation of the two thirds gender rule in appointive positions. The excellencies, it is our submission that the state of Banista, the Parliament of the state of Banista, has violated Article 2 and 9 of Maputo Protocol. Article 2 of ICCPR and Article 82 of the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Good Governance, Your Excellencies. The students, the judges, and the guest speakers were all focused on finding a way forward. I understood counsel to be saying that Article 261 of the Constitution uh, provides uh, an effective remedy. Um, is Article 261 5 really about effective remedy when we talk about? gender representation, representation of parity, or is it just a whip uh, or punishment to parliament when it fails to uh, enact the law? If the respondent submissions that Article 261 actually presents a remedial remedy in the case that the legislature fails to take to give implementive measures to or fails to take legislative steps to give effect to the general rule. And this might be seen as a whip, however, this is going to be, this we submit would be a positive step on the part of the state to show its commitment to actually uh, pushing the woman agenda. Because under Article 261.5, if the High Court gives additional timelines for the legislature to take uh, legislative measures and it contravenes it, then there are other repercussions that may arise. And these repercussions are that of declaring parliament unconstitutional. Taking into consideration the mischief that the two-thirds gender rule is sought to address, the social, cultural, economic, and political context within which this case has arisen in the state of Afghanistan, uh, the role of Banistan as a state in the promotion, protection, and furtherance of women's rights, and the coming general election in the state of Banistan. How does your response to this application help, one, in the furtherance, protection, and promotion of the rights of women in the state of Banistan, and two, how does your response to this application assist this court in the development of African jurisprudence in the protection of women's rights? Thank you. Your Excellency, it's indeed our submissions that our application before this court would actually have good jurisprudence for this court, particularly because, and particularly with regards to the issue of exhaustion of law remedies. We have submitted that there is still an avenue in the domestic courts of Banister, which can be exhausted. And so this court actually agreed with our submission to actually go forth to show that this court indeed should be a court of last resort rather than a court of first instance. And if there is actually a possibility 
for exhaustion of local remedies, it has to be taken. And we make reference to the case of uh, Anwar Justice Council versus Utopia, a decision of 2006 in which at paragraph 58, the African Commission held that even if there is the slightest possibility of a remedy being effective, that remedy needs to be pursued. Thus, the applicants will have to pursue these remedies or show the court how exhaustion of these local remedies have been uh, unduly prolonged for them to actually bypass that and seek recourse to this court. My question is with regard to your interpretation of the state obligation insofar as the implementation of this principle is concerned. The language in your own constitution, the language in the Maputo Protocol, the language in CDL is very deliberate. It says shall. So how do you interpret your obligation insofar as the language of the framers of those um, documents is concerned, in that they impose a positive obligation? So in essence, I would like you to expound on how the state of Arista is, is complying with this due diligence principle insofar as this obligation is concerned. It seems from the arguments that there's been a lot of abdication of the responsibility. So if you can just expound on that. On the issue of the use of the language shall that has been raised by Your Excellency, indeed, it's our submission that the use of the word shall is not cast in stone. And first, we make the submission that the issue about the gender rule was not a specific legal right, but was actually a constitutional principle. A constitutional principle that will only concretize into a specific right if additional remedies have been, if additional steps have been taken. And these additional steps are legislative, policy, and administrative, all of which are long-winded and protracted and require time. For instance, this has already been implemented at Article 177, 1B of the Constitution, that provides for modalities of the application of the gender rule. With international litigation in the African Court on human and people rights in Arusha, using the Maputo Protocol being key strategy under the analysis. The work done towards achieving gender equality is so important in ensuring social justice and justice for the entire society. At the point now, uh, our agenda is women, our agenda is human rights, and that is why um, we've thought it fit to actually approach our partners such as the Strathmore School and Safaricom and others to just make this conversation uh, transcend beyond our four walls in the office and just the conversation that brings together many more parties who are not necessarily doing this work that we do every day. So at Safaricom, we're very excited uh, to have partnered with Equality Now at Strathmore Law School to support the inaugural National Equality Wood Competition. Some of you may wonder what business a communications company like ours has in supporting a wood court competition about equality and also about gender equality. So the way we think about ourselves is Safaricom is a young company. And we want to grow to be a hundred years. And we want to grow to be those hundred years gracefully. And to do this, we know we have to operate in a just and equal environment. And as a company, we must do our part to achieve that. Fortunately, we have had eminent women lawyers that have led to the women's movement. The women's movement has engaged in an elaborate, widespread, and comprehensive advocacy for gender equality and women's rights, using tools such as advocacy, education, and agitation for legal reforms. These efforts must be recognized and carried by all of us. Krishna Huka, a professional leadership consultant, coach, and trainer, has identified leadership traits which she proposes are unique to women and which front the case for women to be placed and bet strategically in leadership positions. At the national level, National Assembly has state women, which translates to about 19.4% of the total membership. While at the Senate, countries of nomination again, we have 18 women out of 67 senators. In total, we have therefore about 26.9% the lowest percentage of women in East Africa in terms of women in politics. The lessons learned were participation in national dialogue on issues of governance and the realization of fundamental rights must be inclusive, especially 
of the younger generation of Kenya who have a potential to come up with innovative solutions that may help the country move forward. This gives the students uh, an opportunity to engage in current affairs, um, especially that Kenya is now undergoing elections um, and the uh, gender equality rule is, is very critical. It was clear from the dialogue during the moot competition that young people have innovative solutions to the nation's problems and must be included in decision making on all issues of importance to the nation for they are the leaders of tomorrow.